Well, good morning, everyone. Let's get through some of the highlights in this forecast over the next couple of weeks. And we're going to begin first with the last seven days of total accumulated precipitation. We finally got a chance to see which of the models did the best with this pattern. I'll be honest with you, the smartest thing would have been to blend them. So I worked on something over the weekend, which is a comparison between what actually happened over the last seven days versus what was forecast seven days ago for the last seven days. And everything that you see blue on this map is where the European model was too dry. In other words, reality was much wetter, like here in the plains, parts of the Midwest and then right in through this area. Remember, the European was digging that low deep into Florida and then rolling it up the East Coast but offshore. So I'm going to be working on some new products that help us understand model accuracy and skill over time with some of the variables that we all care about, care about Excuse me, which would be you know, temperature and, and precipitation. Now, as it stands this morning, as the sun was rising, this is still a very deep low rolling up the East Coast. And man, if we had enough cold air, this would have been a massive nor'easter. We're going to talk about the snow squalls coming in behind this and also in the Pacific North Northwest, we're going to be replacing some of this deep, dense fog here over the next 24 hours with a deep low that's coming out uh, of parts of California. And California is going to really get a lot of precipitation out of this. So this morning's all hazards weather map, lots of flood watches, warnings, advisories up the East Coast. This continues to be a major precipitation maker, but on the backside, very windy conditions, snow squalls, winter storm warnings coming off of uh, Lake Michigan, Lake Erie, and then you can see right up against the Appalachian Mountains, some very, very strong winds as well. There's still some very dense fog this morning here, but we're going to watch this next system come through and really deliver quite a bit of precip. Let's see it all in action here with the high res NAM. So as we play through midday today, a lot, look at this, some of these areas are going to be producing these convective snow squalls. And as they come through, it's going to dump locally very heavy snow, big fat snowflakes very rapidly happening. Then a moment later, it, it might clear out. That's going to be throughout the day today while the West Coast sees round after round of scattered rain coming through, some of which could be quite heavy. So again, going right over the top of those foggy areas throughout the day today and then the coastal low by Wednesday, getting through Wednesday morning and midday, starts to slide farther to the south. That's one of the things we're going to watch. There's an issue with this pattern. I've talked about it now for a few weeks, and that is that Alaska seems to be controlling the flow of things. I'm just playing you through the next 15 days, and if you just watch most of the next 15 days, there's troughs of low pressure in and around Alaska. Now, we do get this sense that toward the end of the month, we start to break a piece of this off as the jet extends here and dives into the western United States, and that subtropical jet begins to get a life and flavor of its own that's going to keep racing up the east coast. But if you get flow coming over the top like this in northern and central Canada, it's going to be very mild and prevent a linking with some really, really cold air. I am watching. Let's take you back here, right here. This would be Christmas getting into the day after Christmas. This is after the flow comes into California, into Arizona, some into New Mexico, which they desperately need. We need to watch for this. Ready? If I trace out the flow, it's doing this, which means southwest flow with a trough. The northwest flows over the top of it, so it'll be dry Canada, but active starting about a week from now in the southern plains of the United States. We're going to watch that system come out here in the forecast models. Here's what it's looking like already in the WPC. One system out today, snow squalls to follow it. System strolls along the coast of California delivering moisture, but then lately in the new forecast model starts to show its kind of forward progression coming through Southern California into Arizona, and then it'll emerge about a week from now in the Southern Plains of the United States. That's what all of this is. I'm gonna show this to you quickly, okay, to try to keep this video shorter here. This is what's going on through Wednesday into Thursday and Friday. There's the low, sliding farther to the south by Thursday. Now watch. That moves into Arizona in both models. We start to advect or move moisture out ahead of it. A system hits the uh, parts of the northwest, which has got enough cold air to put some snow down for that one. And then this low emerges next Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. See that? Both models, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday in the midsection of the country. At the end of this, we finally get the jet extension that gets here. We've been waiting on that jet extension for a while. So how much are we getting? Here's the ECMWF seven day total. That's the GFS seven day total. So we're still seeing these three pieces, one, two, three coming through the pattern in both models pretty well. By the way, the graph cast model shows that that next system not only comes out of, of Arizona and New Mexico, but then really develops into a deeper low, spreading some heavy rains into some places that desperately need it right here in the central part of the United States. Again, the Mississippi Basin, part of the Midwest, upper Midwest, Northern Plains, very dry. So how about some probability? Oh, no, not probably. We'll do that next. How about the jet extension maps? This is uh, the 29th. There it is. 
In fact, you could argue that we have one almost continuous branch of the subtropical jet which begins in Africa and ends in Bermuda. So we're only leaving off a little tiny piece here. But the problem with this flow is, where's the polar component to it? It just doesn't exist. And as a result, we tend to keep a lot of mild air in place. Throughout Canada, with that northwest flow, dry. I mean, that's a map showing you the chance of getting over a half inch in the next 10 days. Who's on the wetter side of it? This is what the probability is. Whoops, got a new model running. Let's flip that back. This is the probability over the next 10 days of grabbing uh, an inch. So now you can see that system showing up about a week from now coming out in the southern plains toward the Midwest. We'll keep a very close eye on that one. Okay, bigger picture, snowfall. If you're curious, who's got a best chance of it between now and 10 days from now? Some snow coming out with that next system in the plains, but that's going to be the next chance we get for it. Beyond this, the new CPC update for December 30th through January 12th just keeps the pattern on repeat. You notice that? Get the same issue, northwest flow here, better subtropical jet stream flow there and there, mild north. That's a very El Nino look to the pattern, although I could blame this a whole lot more on the Gulf of Alaska trough. So from here, just want to give you the latest update. This is the new European extended forecast for the month of January. We're only looking at precip. I just want to point out here that it's wettest across the southern half of the United States. We'll talk more about that as the week goes on. Temperatures, major change in temperature coming up here. There's Tuesday. Look at this. How often do you say that Montana is warmer in December than the southeastern United States? We've got that going on right now. This is getting into Wednesday, Thursday, a lot of downslope flow, mild air flooding the central part of North America. And we just ask how long it's going to last, as long as the Gulf of Alaska trough is there. Here's your next five days, day 5 through 10, and day 10 through 15. Now, the cooler air that you see here, this isn't linked to Arctic air. This is just all a part of that subtropical flow, which is what's keeping the south pretty wet in this particular setup as well. Got some new long-range information. I talk about it more in the in-depth video from the multi-model ensemble forecast, but this is the new January, February, March outlook in terms of temperatures. Here's a quick look over, excuse me, that was precip. Here's a quick look over at temperatures. But uh, you still see the same thing, a little drier risk in the northwest, drier risk in the mid-south to the Ohio Valley. That's very typical of El Nino. So we finished with South America, and we watched the models over the weekend trend wetter and wetter for the driest parts of Brazil. Severe storms rampaged parts of, uh, of, of, of Argentina, still expecting wetter conditions there. But we're back to the same old antics with the model. European model bringing much wetter conditions across a big section of Brazil's growing area, leaving only the small corner here of Mato Grosso, Tocantins, and Pata uh, dry. Still wet in Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay, and southern Brazil. GFS puts a big donut hole there with much drier conditions. So we'll need to watch how this plays out. I'm telling you, the next couple of weeks are most critical for South America and the success of the soybean crop. So I'll keep you updated, and we'll talk again tomorrow. Thanks.